Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good evening and a warm welcome to one and all present over here to the final day of instructional workshop on advanced cryptography. The objective of this workshop is to provide you with an opportunity to learn more about cryptography from various perspectives and sources. It is both an honor and a privilege to stand before you today and we warmly welcome you to this learned community. Let's start this event with a silent prayer. Thank you. I would like to welcome Mr. Renjit Verghese, Assistant Professor at Department of Mathematics, St. Thomas College, to introduce the resource person for the session. Hi, hi good evening all. Dr. Ajit Kumar Vyasrao currently serves as the security consultant responsible for risk assessment and vulnerability management for all services and products developed by Netair. He had previously worked in many reputed companies like Cisco Systems, Juniper Networks, Emphasis, and Wipro Technologies. Dr. Ajit Kumar Vyasrao completed his master's in computer technology with an impressive second rank. He earned his PhD in applied science from VTU Belga. He's also a life member of Technology Research Society of India. Please join me in welcoming our resource person for the session, Dr. Ajit Kumar Vyasrao. Welcome, sir. Thank you, uh, Ranjit. Uh, can we start? Yes, sir. We may start. Yeah. Thank you. So let me share my <coughs> screen. If there is any disturbance in audio, please let me know. So hope uh, my desktop is visible. Are you able to see the presentation? Yes, sir. OK, thank you. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, the organizers of this instructional workshop. So I'm taking this topic role of transport layer security in ensuring uh, secure communication. So I have seen the agenda for this instructional workshop started with the <clears throat> cryptography related algorithms, hashing and all those things. Today, whatever I'm going to deliver is somewhat application side of that. We know uh, public key cryptography, uh, then uh, symmetric, asymmetric encryption, hashing. But how it is applied in the real world, how we are using this application, these cryptography related algorithms in our day-to-day -day life so this is the agenda for the day i will be discussing about uh, security and osi layers discussion about secure shell and secure socket layer tls security and tls 1.2 that is the current standard but also about digital signature digital certificate chain of trust and we'll be showing some hands on uh, how to get the certificate information, what, what key is being used for signing, 
all those things we are going to discuss so in today's net uh, today's world we are all connected connected over the internet so we need to secure the data data is the data is equal to money in today's uh, world so securing the data is very important because data can be used and sold to the competitor and it can it can exposure of the data can bring down the revenue for the company so when we talk about securing the data there are two aspects one is securing data at rest so data which is stored data how to secure this stored data so there are various algorithms or applications are available the preferred way is full disk encryption you encrypt the entire data and save it so securing the data at rest can be done by doing a uh, full disk encryption the biggest challenge is securing the data in transit so suppose i am sending data from one particular source to a another destination we all know that our internet is built on tcp ip protocol stack and by default tcp ip protocol st stack doesn't provide security all data is transmitted in a clear text unless you apply security security is a added layer for the tcp ip network there are various technologies by which we can secure the data in transit one is creating a secure channel basically we are going to create a secure channel between two endpoints and the technologies could be like we can use at the network layer we can use ipsec that is ipsec is a standard so at the network layer it will encrypt the entire ip packet and transport it over the internet then we have some advanced technologies like mpls and at the transport layer we have tls transport layer security if you look at the osi stack so question is which layer is responsible for ensuring the security of data so we have layers from physical to application layer can we designate a single layer which can take the responsibility of securing the data the answer is no one layer cannot protect the data there are challenges security challenges at each layer each layer has to provide some sort of security to ensure the security of the data that's why we have different technologies like link layer encryption at the data link layer ipsec at the network layer and we have tls kind of technology at the application so i am giving a pictorial representation how security is handled at various layers so macsec at the data link layer so nowadays we are using wireless connection in our workplace in our house so this data link layer encryption so security at this layer is very important because we have a open channel okay it is uh, uh, we see in a wired network we can identify if somebody is sniffing or tapping our communication or not but in a wireless communication it is very difficult to identify the the intruder or attacker or who is silently or passively listening to our communication so we need to protect data at the uh, data link layer it's also and it is not sufficient if you ask me why we cannot handle the security at one layer each layer has different purpose if you look at these three layers three things are very important in our security and networking we have a mac address that is the physical address that identifies unique host within a network then ip address it is a logical address which identifies unique network on the internet then we have the service point addressing at the transport layer 
that is nothing but port numbers the purpose of the port numbers or service point addressing is you can reach a specific host or specific network over the internet using the destination ip address you can reach a target host by using the mac address but once you reach the target system on the target system multiple applications might be running right so to identify right application we need service point addressing so each of this needs some sort of security so we might be wondering why we need three different levels of addressing in order to transfer data from source to destination each one has its own purpose so, so and the bottom layers network layer data link layer and physical layers are mostly implemented on <clears throat> hardware they are also like they, they they are not end to end layer but the transport and above layers are end to end layer because they establish they directly communicate with the the target system whereas when it comes to network data link layer when when packet traverses multiple networks several times the data is encapsulated and decapsulated by various internetworking devices like routers so let us compare uh, ipsec and ssl vpn ipsec vpn and ssl vpn ipsec as discussed it is implemented at network layer operates at layer 3 the advantage of this layer 3 encryption is like the end applications need not worry or it is transparent to the applications running on the system so application generated data will be encapsulated within transport layer data and transport layer segment is encapsulated within ip packet okay at this level entire ip packet is encrypted there are two modes two types actually tunnel mode and transport mode so that depends on how we are going to implement the <laughs> ip sec vpn so if we talk about connectivity of the ip sec it connects remote host to the entire network because <clears throat> gateway so you can have a ip sec in tunnel mode between two gateways okay so you can terminate the ip sec tunnel by the gateway at the gateway and then it will be sent to the target host router will take care of routing the packet to a specific host within that subnet okay so one tunnel can handle the traffic between multiple hosts okay here end end host need not implement a software because we are implementing between two gateways two routers applications application is all ip based application can support ipsec vpn because it is transparent gateway location gateway is usually implemented on the firewall in case of ipsec vpn then security control it is a broader access because once it is terminated okay then the gateway decides how to route that packet to a specific endpoint endpoints if we are using okay this is very important if you are using the <laughs> transport mode then we can have a we can have a ipsec tunnel between two end host okay it is host to host or host to gateway okay in that case we need to run a special software so when we when we opt for work from home or when you are <coughs> like uh, having access to your class uh, your uh, when you are conducting online classes you can connect using a, a vpn uh, that is actually ipsec kind of vpn vpn that is uh, implemented at the network layer when it comes to ssl vpn it operates from layer 4 to 7 so transport layer till the application layer when we say layer 7 we are i'm taking the osi reference folder 
connects user to specific application and services. When we talk about uh, IPsec, SSL VPN connectivity, it connects user to a specific app. It is best suited for email and browser based applications, net banking, and you can uh, like secure email, all those things can use SSL VPN. The one difference between IPsec VPN and SSL VPN is gateway is typically deployed beyond the firewall. So gateway is behind the firewall, whereas in case of IPsec VPN, gateway is implemented on the firewall itself. When it comes to control, it is more granular compared to IPsec VPN and the endpoints access the target application using browsers and uh, sometimes they can also use the uh, thin client. So I will take a pause here. Uh, any questions so far? So I start with some networking background because it is uh, required when we talk about uh, this TLS and other things. So if there are no questions, I will proceed. You can also ask question at the end. So this is very generic. When we are accessing certain servers, we use HTTP and another is sometimes we use HTTPS. So HTTP is an application layers uh, <coughs> protocol. And all these protocols, if you look at the FTP, HTTP, SMTP, all these things are implemented in a client server model. Server will be running on one, one specific system and the users can use client to connect to the server. Okay. And the server always uses well-known port number, whereas clients will use FRML, the dynamic port numbers. It is not a, a, a well-known port number. Client can use FRML or dynamic port numbers, whereas server always uses FTP server means port number 21, telnet server means port number 23. The difference between HTTP communication to system, client and server, okay, can use HTTP protocol or HTTPS protocol. If application uses HTTP as a transport, it is not encrypted, okay, so <clears throat> HTTP uses port number 80, HTTP server uses port number 80, and your web browser is the client, HTTP client. You can connect to the target server, and the entire communication, okay, so a, a person sitting in your subnet can run Wireshark or some or sort of sniffer, and can, can decipher or can get the information, because unless some other mechanisms are implemented, for example, IPsec at the network layer. If, if we are not using any security mechanism, then anything sent over the HTTP is like it, can, it is sent in a clear text and there is no security. HTTP works in the application layer. HTTP is faster. Remember, when we talk about security, it is always some overhead because it requires all encryption, decryption, requires some CPU cycles some execution, some space to store the key. And so there will be, all, so if, if you are using security means some sort of, uh, like we have to compensate something for ensuring the security, maybe performance or it might be slower. HTTP does not use any certificate for, it is not a certificate based communication. So as we know, typical typical transport layer, first is TCP handshake between two endpoints, then they can establish the HTTP connection between two systems. And HTTP is stateless. Compared to HTTP, HTTPS uses port number 443. It works in transport layer because we talk about the security. HTTP is little slower compared to HTTP. HTTP needs SSL certificate. It is based on the certificate, server certificate. Clients are going to connect and clients will verify whether I'm connecting to a, a right target system or not. 
so when we are using when we are accessing net banking you might have observed that there is a padlock at the http url when you are providing the bank address net banking address so you are going to use a secure so basically it it uh, builds a secure channel between your system and the the bank server http is also a stateless protocol means it doesn't maintain any state information so in case of in case of tcp like we have tcp segment number sequence number and uh, the acknowledgement number some kind of tracking is there so why these numbers are important is say over the internet when the when the when the information is sent in the form of an ip packet because ip packet is the de facto unit which travels over the internet and uh, reaches the destination whether it carries a uh, http uh, information or http information everything is carried with in the form of ip ip packet only because router to router communication is through ip so tcp if if your application uses a uh, tcp th there might be chances there might be multiple paths between the same source and destination some ip packets might arrive out of order but at the transport layer the packets are assembled okay by using that tcp sequence number and it is arranged properly and push to the application layer but http on its own does not maintain any state information it cannot differentiate between two requests coming from the uh, same system so this is just a comparison between many a times people use ssh and ssl interchangeably um uh, SSH is secure shell actually. It is a cryptographic network protocol used to access network devices. You can access a device like a router or switch using Telnet or you can configure the SSH. The difference between Telnet access and SSH access is you can you can send the, your commands, your, you, can, you can initiate a traffic or command and responses in an encrypted form if you are using SSH. If you are using a telnet, it is visible because the, the telnet does not support any kind of encryption. SSH basically allow a user to log in securely into another system over a network. It could be over the internet as well. And a remote machine and also and to transfer files from one machine to another through the network. SSL is a secure socket layer, it's a networking protocol, it gives secure transmission in a non secure network that is ip ip is a non secure network ip by default doesn't provide is a tcp ip network by default won't support any won't provide any security ssl always requires a certificate and it works on the public key encryption i think you are aware about like in case of uh, symmetric key encryption same key will be used for encryption and decryption whereas in case of public key each endpoints will use its own generate its it, uh, a pair of keys public key and private key and they share they exchange they they transfer their public key to the other party so encryption can be done using public key whereas decryption will be done by the uh, private key ssl is implemented in various operations of network environments such as browsing also we are going to discuss like uh, before dls we had ssl standards now ssl is deprecated okay so same thing here i am putting in the form of a table So now we'll talk about standards, different standards. We started with SSL 1.0, it was one published. And the first published standard is SSL 2.0 in 1995. And it is deprecated in 2011. You can see the details about SSL in RFC 6176. Similarly, we had SSL 3.0, it came very next year but uh, it was in 
use till 2015. Then we started with the DLS 1.0, published in 1999, deprecated in 2021. DLS 1.1, published in 2006 and deprecated in 2021. When I say deprecated means it is no more supported. Now we have only TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3. See, uh, there are some compatibility issue. TLS 1.3 communication, okay, it does not fall back for the previous version. TLS 1.2 can be backward co compatible. Now we are no more using TLS 1.1. The the standard is TLS 1.2. We need to configure the TLS 1.2. Otherwise, we may not be able to communicate with the server. <laughs> we are going to discuss why these standards are important in coming slides. If you look at the timeline starting from 1995 till 2020, NetSparker implemented Netscape, sorry, Netscape implemented SSL version 3. Then uh, Internet IE Explorer first started with the 1.0, TLS 1.0 in 1999. TLS 1.1 support was, uh, came in 2016. Google Chrome started supporting TLS 1.2 in 2018. Now Google supports by default TLS 1.3. Then in 2020, TLS 1.3, 2018, TLS 1.3 version came into uh, like usage. So <clears throat> when we talk about this SSL uh, and all those things, it is good to have some hands on actually. So I'm sharing some of these slides. See, if, if you visit this slide and So there is a host name, okay? If you supply host host name like google.com or any any well-known system, it will it will scan actually. It will do a SSL server test and it will list down all the supported ciphers, okay? So just for curiosity, I have just submitted the St. Thomas address that is so you can also try after this session or something like that to check okay so which and all the protocols are supported so overall rating is a so you can see that the server supports a tls 1.3 so this is the form of ssl the the certificate so certificate will have some fields like subject common names, alternate name, valid from. So this certificate is valid from 24th or 23rd of February to uh, 2023 and valid until uh, like 24th May 2023. So, uh, like it was like expires in three days. But today, if you if you do that, it has been revised actually. You can see that it will be uh, like uh, it is extended for another three months actually. So deliberately, I have taken this uh, like when we, when I was preparing my slides actually. So there will be the validity information will be there. If the validity expires, then when you are trying to connect this web server, so it will give a, a notification the site is not secure would you like to continue okay so you can say that but uh, now if you try your uh, uh, the address the web address okay the www.stthomas.ac.in you can definitely say that the validity is still august 2023 then who is the issuer then signature algorithm this is all we are going to discuss so it uses SHA-256 with RSA, then some other fields are there we are going to discuss later. So interesting thing is 
the cipher suits see this supports both tls version 1.3 and 1.2 okay so if you enable tls 1.3 these are the cipher suits so basically what happens when the client trying to connect the server so we are going to discuss that handshake during this handshake process client will uh, list or provide the list of ciphers it supports then server server will agree upon the cipher suits if both are using the same set of certificate so when it is agreeing it will always agree for the highest one so if you uh, let us assume that the client proposes like i have support for this tls aes 256 gcm sha 384 and tls aes 128 gsm sha 256 suppose server supports both then server agrees for the highest one always it will go for that if you enable tls 1.2 then these are the cipher suits supported by your web server okay and these are the weak sub ciphers so these this the cipher suits which are in green are the stronger cipher suits but the cipher suits in red means they are weak ciphers why what we need to do as a best practice is when we configure our server we have to disable all these weak ciphers by configuration otherwise what happens if client instead of like if client has support only for these weak ciphers then server has to agree only for the weak cipher and these weak weak ciphers have some vulnerabilities there are different uh, attacks okay based on those attacks and vulnerabilities only they like we are designating them as a weak cipher so we have to make sure that our server always supports strong ciphers and through configuration we have to disable disable all these weak ciphers cipher suits so, and also you can act bro uh, access your uh, university or college website through mobile so that's why you can see android and different browser supports and all this informations are available it is a good documentation so <clears throat> it is uh, available over the internet you can just uh, go to the ssl labs and submit your server address and uh, it is a public information okay you can just get all the information you can try this as a part of hands on <clears throat> next so when we talk about security three things are very important that is also known as cia confidentiality integrity and authentication so if any of these th any of these three are uh, uh, like compromised then security is in danger confidentiality is always ensuring the data is not available in its own its original form for any attacker data is not transmitted in its original way it is encrypted or it is transformed to some other way so that even the data is captured by an intruder he will not be able to get any meaningful information authentication is very important because over the over the internet it is very difficult to establish the true identity so when we when we are uh, trying to connect you might have seen there are several instances where a fake website has been created there are many phishing uh, mails so phishing attacks you will receive a, a notification stating that okay you are uh, our bank is updating the customer data please click click here and update your records if you click that it it may redirect you a, a fake website and you you might think that okay it is the original and uh, you may come like you may disclose your information and that can be taken by any intruder or any attacker or cyber criminal and can be used for any other purpose integrity means 
the data integrity the data is not changed during the transit whatever the information sent from the source is received as it is without any modification at the receiving end so tls security has three objectives confidentiality authentication and integrity so the first thing which is going to happen is as a student of network you need to understand like it is a between two client and uh, the co connection is between a client and the server first connection which is going to be established is the tcp connection Three, tcp handshake will happen then tls handshake will start so in this tls handshake what and all the information are exchanged handshake means it is a kind of see when we meet a, a, a new person or a stranger we'll handshake and we'll try to exchange our cards and we introduce ourselves in the cipher suit so in the tls handshake the first thing is cipher suit negotiation which which and all it is not a single cipher see we have authentication we have hashing okay so three set set of cryptographic informations are required okay client and server negotiate protocol version this is the first thing so i can communicate tls 1.1 and tls 1.2 the server will choose okay i i have support for tls 1.2 let us use tls 1.2 authentication during the handshake the client and uh, so it is tls there is a, another version mtls where mutual tls here most of the time see client always verify the server but ser server is not going to verify the client in, in tls okay so client will validate the server certificate while establishing the connection so when when i am connecting as a client to net banking server so my concern is like the communication should be secure and i should be connecting to the right server so as a client i will check the validity of the the server certificate okay this is tls in some scenarios even the the server need to verify the client whether i am connecting to the right client or not so in that case both client and server will exchange their certificate and the ver verification happens key exchange the client and server derive a session key that will be used for the symmetric encryption for the data once the tls connection is established see we know about public key uh, so like <clears throat> we know about public key infrastructure so in this case actually uh, we use the hybrid mode the public key for uh, securely exchanging the symmetric key the encryption will be done using the symmetric key but how securely this symmetric key is established between two parties is using the the public key encryption so i'm just <coughs> giving uh, a diagrammatic view of the communication so as i said earlier first is the tcp connection so minimum of 68 millisecond is required so first it will sync client will send sync sync plus acknowledgement then uh, uh, the acknowledgement so three way handshake happens once the tcp connection is established the, the tls client will send client hello okay so some processing happens here server hello server will send server hello client key exchange see you you can see the timeline 102 milliseconds 170 milliseconds it takes some time to negotiate the client will send okay so in the client hello i will uh, client will send okay certificate uh, it, it its capabilities like i can support i can use these cipher suits server will agree and uh, send it okay i we can use this i support this so we can use this so at this point of time they will <coughs> establish means which particular cipher suit we use so till this it is a tls handshake okay once this is done a secure channel is 
built between the the client and the server that is a, a cha the channel is a kind of abstraction what we can say the channel is nothing but the information is sent over the line in the encrypted form so that it 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 looks like okay you are sending the information in a secured way and uh, a, a, a tunnel will have a, a secured tunnel means it has a two distinct endpoint okay only two systems can send and receive data is suppose if some intermediate system try to capture and they can capture they can they can passively take the information but they cannot make out any meaningful information once they establish this then actual application data will be from client to server and all this application data will be sent in the encrypted format so this is very important slide actually when we you might have seen here cipher suits something like tls aes tls underscore aes 256 gcm sha 384 so basically what it conveys tls means which protocol i am using tls protocol then key agreement protocol here it is ECC DHE, Elliptic Curve, Diffie Hellman Key Exchange. Okay. Then for authentication, I am using RSA. Then, so you can see here, you can see here it is, if we look at this, this combination with this one for encryption, symmetric key cipher key size, AES 128 CBC mode. Okay, this is for encryption and SHA for hashing. Okay, so this this slide is very important to understand the TLS. So when we get this information, like what and all the cipher source supported, <coughs> we can understand. Okay, what is the protocol? What is the key agreement protocol being used? And uh, what protocol is used for authentication, encryption, and hashing? So here it is diagrammatically explained. The SL say always client initiates, SSL client initiates the handshake. Okay. Uh, see when we develop applications client in this client server uh, model, so somebody has to initiate the connection, right? So in case of SSL or TLS, it is always client who is going to initiate the connection. There are some applications where server itself will initiate the connection or connection request or handshake or something like that. But in this case, client always try to like establish the connection. So he will send the client hello. And in this client hello cryptographic information, what and all the protocol suits I can support or I'm, I can use. Then server will receive this. Remember, before sending the client hello, these two endpoints are already connected using the TCP connection. Server will send server hello. <coughs> then the third step is verify server certificate. So, <coughs> so there is a certifying authority. When server sends a certificate, so in the browser, so when I type something like Google com you can see that there's a pad so this is a secured secured one you can click here site information connection is secure okay and also like there are some if you are interested you can use this in browser itself you will have developer tools okay you can open this and there will be a security tab network ML consoles versus make you performance application security see <laughs> you can get the information security information in your browser you can see 
the information the, the cn stands for common name okay ou is organizational unit okay <laughs> show fingerprint and all details are provided here so there is an there is an option you can export this using this export you can save this on your desktop and uh, there are some other tools available online tools available you can analyze so when we when we are trying to connect to a, a, a server if it is enabled with the uh, ssl or tls so you can see the padlock so another example i am going to give is like a, there is a site for testing purpose you can use <coughs> http colon example.com yes immediately you will get the information this is not a secure so you get this information because this doesn't use any certificate here this is a http okay same site okay <clears throat> this is for experiment purpose or for understanding you can use this you can use https dot example dot com now you can see the security and also message you can see the padlock okay so this is a secure and you can see the certificate so i'm com coming here actually client <coughs> client the the see we need to connect to the right server how the client can verify the identity of the server is the certificate is exchanged and by default these certificates are installed google and yahoo all those certificates are installed on the browser by default that their public certificate they can contact the certifying authority and get the information whether it is a valid certificate or not if it is a invalid certificate if it is like expired certificate then it has to be revoked okay even if we are trying to access a web server whose validity is expired then you will get an error because verification will be done so after this exchange client finished server finished they exchange the message and now onwards it is the encrypted information so it is the data is sent over a, a secure channel so as we no like uh, several cryptographic algorithms are being used in the tls cipher suit the negotiation one is key exchange algorithm the method used to securely exchange an encryption key between client and server because this internet see in case of symmetric key system is uh, the key has to be the key has to be exchanged between same server and the client but how to share the symmetric key over an insecure uh, internet i think in the first day also we had a, a session from uh, one of the resource person where it was clearly explained diffy hellman algorithm how we can exchange a key over internet insecure insecure network so there can be so we have key exchange algorithms that will be negotiated authentication or digital signature algorithms so mechanisms to use authenticate the other party using asymmetric cryptography and certificates data encryption algorithm okay which algorithm to use for encrypt and decrypt then data integrity that is hash so these things are negotiated okay we have different algorithms ecdhe ephemeral elliptic curve diffy hellman algorithm for key exchange ecdsc that is elliptic curve digital signature algorithm for authentication aes advanced encryption standard with the gcm mode 128 so <clears throat> this is a 1128 bit we have to as 256 also then sha 256 this is secure hashing algorithm using 256 bit digest in tls authentication schemes 
So historically, hanging on three types of digital signatures, that is DSA, RSA, and ECD, EC, DSA, DSA digital signature algorithm, it is no longer allowed in TLS 1.3 and not available in TLS 1.2. So when we move from one version of the TLS to another version, so certain the support for certain algorithms have been deprecated. RSA algorithm can be used for both key exchange as well as the authentication. Then elliptic curve digital signature algorithm is a variant of DSA, but uses elliptic curve cryptography. So just for information. So uh, I think uh, you might be having the Linux missions available in your labs, colleges, and all. Suppose if you want to use uh, a ready-made Ubuntu kind of uh, system for one hour or two hours for your purpose, you can always use this kind of uh, link. This is for Kubernetes, Kubernetes uh, training related, this one from Linux uh, Foundation. You can always go here. So most of the students might be knowing this, but just sharing for this uh, uh, awareness. So this will be like 120 minutes. Almost for two hours, you can do this. Why this is required? Suppose if you want to install Nmap, if, if you want to do some, uh, like if you want to execute some of the commands, you can try this. So installing your own VM and uh, like installing uh, VMware or uh, the, uh, the other one, uh, some box i believe i don't remember actually so some some you need some application over that you need to install the linux ubuntu or some flavor and all if your requirement is just to execute some linux command just to try out something you can always go for this playground killer coda and uh, it is available for uh, one 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 disadvantage or drawback of this uh, application is it is temporary means you cannot save your results you cannot again log in here if a purpose is only for temporary use you can always make use of this okay so <laughs> we need to understand i think most of you are aware we can connect to the server either using a web server either using a, a web client or in the command prompt also we can we can connect to the web server that is curl curl is a command so I'm going to use this one actually just for uh, curl https google.com verbose hyphen v's. So you can so. <clears throat> You can actually you are connecting to the the Google server here verbose means output instead of uh, like either you can you can capture this traffic using a Wireshark like application or if you want to get the output in a verbose form you can always use the minus V option or hyphen V option curl the website then you can see that say how handshake happens client hello server hello encryption encrypted exchanges certificate cert verify finished tls change cipher tls handshake finished see finally both client and server agreed upon this tls aes 256 gsm sha384 server certificate google.com See, start date expired date. This expires in July. Then the host name. This is <coughs> so all these details. I think uh, in the SSL lab also we got this information. So, one good thing about here is it gives the certificate information as well and various information. So <coughs> You can also use curl this option with your university uh, the address the internet address st thomas college ac.in and 
just for learning purpose you can go through so one disclaimer when we do all this activity we many times we we know we will be having access to the many sensitive information as a responsible uh, individual or citizen okay we should use all such information only for good purpose okay the intention and also it is legally uh, prohibited to scan some other networks somebody's website and all those things without permission we are not supposed to touch their net network or infrastructure okay so be aware during your journey you learn many tools and those tools are going to provide tons of information but before using a, a tool just to try to understand whether i am authorized to use this tool do i have permission to use this tool and if i get any information i am going to use it only for the good purpose so i will take a pause here it has been almost uh, one hour uh, looking for any queries from your end Hello. Shall I continue with the topic? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So you can try these commands and try to analyze the output. So again, explaining this handshake in detailed manner. So the client hello is the first thing which is going to happen. So here, the client will send all supported TLS versions, UTC time, then a random number, all supported cipher suit, session ID, and URL of the server. So this also captured, you can run a Wireshark and if you analyze, you can see these are the for the handshake type. Okay, then the random number, session ID, cipher suits. See, 16 different types of ciphers which are supported by the client. This is the first thing. Then, server hello. Server will send highest supported when it receives the cipher suits from the client. So it will check and we have to remember one thing, server will, will always be running with the latest version and it will have support for most of the ciphers. The client may be a system which is running with a uh, operating system which is might be the, the version of the or the capabilities if you compare the hardware and software capabilities, uh, uh, capabilities of server and client server will be always on the higher side in terms of hardware and software so it is safe to presume the server always will have support for most of the cipher suits but the client may not have support for all the cipher suits when it sends set of cipher suits server will take will pick the highest one so let us assume one example is uh, like uh, it is a 128 bit and 256 client supports both then servers always pick for 256 bits because key length the security is all somewhat somehow it is related to the key size as well
so server hello also you can see so cipher suit selected this one is selected you can run wireshark when you are connecting to a target system and try to capture the tls see tls traffic tls 1.2 version tls version 1.2 so here you will see the information the client hello then server hello you if you highlight this you, you can analyze this <clears throat> then certificate server encryption key and server hello done certificate so i think um, you are all mathematicians and uh, you know like there are only two ways of uh, doing the things one is uh, modulus operation and exponentiation so they share two numbers it is all number theory how how they are going to like uh, you uh, how encryption and decryptions are done how these are uh, implemented in different algorithms encryption algorithm exponent exponent right rising to a power and mod so this is uh, they they exchange the the numbers actually so it is a pure mathematical thing so encryption and decryption they are at a common key so here also you can see the information so after client hello and server hello the certificate server key you can if you highlight you you can focus on these things you can understand okay what communication is happening between what negotiation is happening so next one is the client encrypted key client will send his symmetry key using so client will encrypt using server's public key so that server has the server has his private key right when when client sends his key by encrypting this key using server key server key is a public key so public key is always used for the encryption and only server can decrypt and get the client key so that is also you can see client encryption change cipher so all those things so these are some resources i would like to share actually testival tls client then decode digital certificate then list the ciphers supported by http server let us do this one nmap or uh, okay let me install the nmap see what we are going to do is hope this this is visible right can somebody confirm yes okay so what we are going to do is i just installed the nmap on that ubuntu system so as we know like <coughs> example dot we can use this supports both like http and https but we are trying to check the uh, https connection so i'm going to execute this command on the system
excuse me sir yeah so for us the pdf is visible okay just a minute let me okay sir reshare thank you try to share the entire screen i had some issue while trying to share the entire screen having some issue while sharing it is in a separate browser actually i am trying to Okay, what I will do, I will bring the tab here and then try to share. Okay. Just, just give me two minutes. I will settle this. Okay. <clears throat> Hope now it is visible. Yeah. So we just executed this command. Nmap script SSL enum ciphers with example.com. So it has given like it supports TLS 1.2, 1.1, 1.2. And with each version, what are the supported keys or cipher suits? OK, 
okay i will share these links actually <laughs> so you can try Continuing with the presentation, so these are the links we can uh, we can try out some of the hands-on. So so let me know if the slide is visible. Yes, I see. Okay, okay, thank you. So if you if you get the public key how to extract using uh, in in command line so open ssl is the tool actually in order to <clears throat> so you what you can do is if you have the public key if you if you want to extract the see the certificate will have public key many times what happens <clears throat> when we when we uh, when we are going to share our public key that key will be embedded in the certificate and certificate is sent to the the other party so if you are the party you have received the certificate but you have to extract the public key from the certificate we can use the opus open ssl command okay so open using open ssl command we can save the output to the pem file and we can use otherwise there are online pem parser once you save this in a pem format there are online pem parsers are available you can you can uh, use this tool to extract the public key information let me try accessing this So generally, the certificates will be see. <laughs> I have extracted certificate of your college. Okay, using those commands. Let me share. See, if you extract the certificate, this will be in this form, actually. There will be a begin certificate, end certificate. So what you can do is you can copy the entire information from begin to end, OK? And you can use the online parsers. Suppose if you want to extract the, extract the certificate or public key from this, you can, you can use the online parsers. You, you can copy and paste this certificate and you can extract that particular information So I'm not familiar with uh, Google Meet actually. Uh, so some like while sharing, I have some issue. 
please uh, bear with me. So using the online parsers, you can you can extract the public key. So now we are going to discuss something related to digital signature, hash functions. These are very like, uh, now why we are using this uh, TLS, why certificate based, uh, why we need to use certificates for sending the uh, details. So we will try to understand uh, the uh, hash function, then authentication, all those things. So this is very simple actually. So <clears throat> sender, he will run this entire message through a hashing function and create a digest. In the simplest term, like uh, we are all familiar in, in who, those who, who are students of our networks, like we have CRC cyclic redundancy check. So in the layer two frame at the end, we will add the CRC. CRC will be computed on the entire frame and will be appended to the frame. So transmitted when the receiving host receives the frame, it will again compute the CRC. If the received uh, CRC and computed CRC are one and the same, data is not changed in transit. Okay. So similarly, the message is run through a hash, digest is created and it is appended along with the message and sent. The receiver will break that message and digest separately he run he will submit this entire message to a hash algorithm or input function he creates digest in his, at the receiving side and this generated digest is compared with the received digest so if both are same then there is no uh, the data is not manipulated or modified during the transit when we talk about hash functions, these are the desired uh, qualities. So you should be uniformly distributed, collision resistant means it should generate unique hash for every message. For two different messages, you should not generate the same hash. And the hash function, okay, it should be built in such a manner that from the message, you can create a hash, but from the hash, you should not be allowed to create the message. And hash is computed on the entire message. It is not on a part of the message or uh, some portion of the message. And the hash function should be deterministic. Always, it should always generate same output for the same input or same digest for the same message. Why digital signature is required? It is for non-repudiation. Somebody sends a message and later he says that, okay, I, I didn't send that. I am not the originator. It was sent by somebody, some other person. So in that, how to establish, okay, this message was sent by the person who claims he has sent it. So it, it provides an assurance message coming from the, the true source has not been altered. Okay, the sender cannot claim or he cannot retract. He, once he sends a message, if, if it has a digital signature, means we, we are protecting the message with the digital signature means it is it, just remember digital signature is on par with our physical signature. When you sign, when we sign a document, we are legally bound. Okay, later we cannot uh, say that, okay, I, I didn't sign it or I signed. Uh, uh, so you have to prove that, okay, it was, it has been uh, like somebody has forged my signature or something like that. In, in digital world, like forging is not possible. <laughs> Our probability is less because of the technology which we are using. So how digital signature is created? So we know about the hashing mission, hashing mechanism. It is just some additional step for your, the message is run through hash, digest is generated. Then 
we are all familiar with the public key cryptography sender will have pair key, pair of keys public key and private key public key is like it is shared with everyone the entire world private key rest only with the the originator uh, so he will sign the digest with his private key so the resulting entity is digital signature create a hash okay uh, run your message through hash digest is created sign the digest using your private key so this and this digital signature is appended with message we have to remember one thing digital signature is only for proving that it is sent by a, sp a, a specific sender it, it is not ensuring the integrity of the message see there is no encryption of the message message is sent as it is we might have received uh, the the forum number 16 itr and all those things so there will be a signature okay so message is readable the signature digital signature is on par with like okay this is a document signed by me and i am the right person to do this act at the receiving end since message and digital signature are separable so the digital signature is separated from the message okay so beauty of digital signature is receiver uses sender's public key because it is already shared he he uh, like decrypt this using sender's public key okay then the the output is the message digest so the message he has taken the message is subjected to the hashing algorithm digest is generated now the generated digest is compared with the digest resulting out of okay the mathematical transformation of the digital signature with sender's public key okay so this is the this is how digital signatures are created at the source and verified at the destination okay so in in this entire thing the message integrity even if message integrity is see message is sent in a plain text okay message is not encrypted suppose there is a modification then the hash hash will be different so digest will not match okay so signature might be valid the attacker might have might have messed with the message okay he may not be able to he, he do not have sufficient uh, tools to manipulate the digital signature digital signature is intact but message is modified still the digest will not be same okay so in this way message integrity is message integrity is maintained and origin authentication it is coming from the true source but there is no encryption message is sent as it is modification will also impact okay or the digital signature i i just uh, keep the message as it is i will create another fake digital signature and append it and if i send this then the during the verification it will be it will be caught okay so hope you are clear about this the importance of digital signature so <clears throat> So message is not altered during the transit and it is also verifies the sender it is sent from the true source so digital signature or digital certificate is an electronic document that asserts data integrity it is tied to a sender digital signatures are used to sign emails software and digital certificates on many government uh, and court so indian uh, evidence act is say after it act 2000 uh, indian evidence act also amended to recognize digital signature on par on par with the physical signature so entire thing is represented here <clears throat> so message hashing algorithm this is one way hash means you can generate hash from the message but from the hash you cannot generate the message then <clears throat> encryption using the receiver's public key here 
నో సైన్ సైనింగ్ యూజింగ్ సెండర్స్ ప్రైవేట్ కి సైన్ యూజింగ్ సెండర్స్ ప్రైవేట్ కి దట్ ఈస్ డిజిటల్ సిగ్నేచర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అటాచ్డ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ట్రాన్స్పోర్టెడ్ ఓవర్ ద మీన్స్ ట్రాన్స్పోర్టెడ్ ఓవర్ ద ఇంటర్నెట్ రిసీవ్ సో రిసీవర్ విల్ యూజ్ సెండర్స్ పబ్లిక్ కి హీ రన్స్ దిస్ సెండర్స్ పబ్లిక్ కి ఓవర్ డిజిటల్ సిగ్నేచర్ వన్ వే హ్యాష్ ఈస్ జనరేటెడ్ అండ్ హీ రన్స్ హ్యాషింగ్ అల్గార్దం for only for the message if this hash matches with this hash then two things are true so message is mo- mo- not modified during the transit and it is coming from the true source so this is a very generic thing. public key so for supporting digital signature we need public key infrastructure public key infrastructure includes okay public key pub- publish public key or certificates certify that a key is tied to an individual or entity so certifying authority will also comes into picture provide verification of the validity of a public key provide services such as confidentiality integrity and authenticity okay non repudiation and access control so digital certificate encryption plus hash plus digital signature certification authority binds entities to their public keys so <clears throat> when we register our domain okay the web server when we are going to purchase a certificate uh, then so see over the internet to just wanted to check time check how much time i have for uh, this presentation hello uh, sir you can take uh, 10 more minutes okay. or 15 okay. more minutes yeah so we are going to procure the certificate from the vendor they are all well known vendors there are only few players are there few recognized vendors so when two unknown parties are try how two unknown parties can trust each other so i don't know the other party other party he doesn't he do not he don't know me then we need to trust each other in that case when there is a mutual untrust how trust relationship can be established we need a trusted third party this third party and my counterpart also believes third party in this way the a, a, an indirect trust relationship is established between me and my counterpart okay so certifying certification authorities plays that particular role because we need a mechanism when when we want to have this negotiation or business between two unknown parties how how trust relationship can be established so we have seen that digital certificate there are some fields like and the purpose algorithm used for the signature issuer name so these signatures use x.500 uh format actually they are all in they follow the standard format then period of validity start date end date subject's name subject's public key information issuer unique identifier extension and digital signature of ca this is very important in see how i can verify the server or a city bank server is the true server or it is the right identity so city bank has purchased the certificate through a ca that ca has signed okay so that ca has signed the certificate issued to the city bank so through the certifying authority okay i can validate the the city bank server so there is a uh, mechanism suppose the certificate becomes invalid it can it can be uh, invalid for two major reasons one is the public private key is compromised somehow my uh, private key is compromised that is one scenario 
the another is certificate validity is expired so when when the certificate validity expires or my uh, private key is compromised i have to approach the certifying uh, certifying authority certificate authority so immediately there is a mechanism suppose during this period suppose somebody is trying to access my resources okay so if my certificate so see i will go and purchase a new certificate <laughs> but what if somebody is trying to reach me using the old certificate there has to be some mechanism by which i can invalidate the certificate that is known as certificate revocation there the ca will maintain the or <clears throat> the list of the certificate which are invalid that is known as <coughs> crl certificate uh, revocation list <coughs> before checking the whether server certificate is valid or not first the certificate revocation list is consulted okay if this <coughs> certificate is already in uh, revocation list then it is an invalid certificate <coughs> chain of trust this is very interesting there can be multiple players <coughs> so <coughs> root certificate intermediate certificate and end entity so there is a tool by which we can extract <coughs> entire certificate okay but how to verify the chain of trust see this is the end certificate this is an intermediate and this is a root c if you observe here issuer okay so the reference and issuer private key see it is owner's distinguished name, owner's public key, issuers, that is CS distinguished name, and issuer C. If you traverse here, the subject and issuer will, will keep on interchanging, and at the root level, both will be same. I think I have a slide for that. We can visit here. This is very interesting article. So this is this explains certificate chain in a very simple manner <clears throat> subject f given issuer okay he is the intermediate he is the leaf node he is the root so if you traverse from here to here subject and issuer okay the issuer name comes in the subject name and this issuer will be pointing to the next ca see for the end one he is the not root ca issuer is the intermediate okay issuer name will become the intermediate ca subject name and his issuer will be the root certificate but when you reach the root certificate both subject and issuer name will be identical so in this way you can identify whether a ca is a root ca or intermediate ca so so same is here subject one example I have taken, <coughs> subject CN is Amazon, issuer CN is Amazon root CA. So if you start from here, okay, it, it this is the leaf node, this is the intermediate, this is the root. This, this one is the root. So in this way, when you reach the root, the, the issuer and the CA will both will be the same. Okay, I can skip this certificate chain. I can keep. So, just to, want to cover this one actually digital certificate and digital signature comparison of these two. Digital signature is like a fingerprint of an attachment to a digital procurement document, whereas digital certificate is a file that ensures holder's identity. Digital signature is I generate a hash and I will sign with my private key. Okay, but when it comes to digital certificate, some third party that is CA is attesting my identity. Okay, he, he is binding my identity to the certificate. The process in case of digital signature, hashed value of the original message is encrypted with sender's secret to generate the digital signature. We know how digital signature is created. 
when it comes to digital certificate it, it is generated by the ca that involves four step key generation registration verification and creation which is beyond the scope of this uh, discussion that's why just giving the overview of this so what is how they are different security in case of digital signature authenticity of the sender and integrity of the document security services it serves only two purpose digital sig signature authenticity of the sender and integrity of the document and since auth authenticity of the sender is established the non repudiation is uh, ensured so he cannot say that i didn't sign this but in digital certificate it provides security authenticity of the certificate holder what you can say is in case of digital certificate like it is also like encrypted so even <clears throat> security is also provided so keys are sent actually using that later the both the parties can can establish a secure channel and send and receive the information digital star uh, digital signature star, uh, follows a dss that is digital signature standard whereas a digital certificate follows x.50 59 uh, standard format so this is one vulnerability there is a uh, i will share this uh, presentation with the organizers please go through some of the uh, hands on actually i'm running out of time otherwise i would have given hands on as well so <clears throat> this is my conclusion transport layers security plays very important role in securing the data securing data in transit when we are sending the data over the internet majority of the implementations are using tls 1.2 version so tls 1.2 and 1.3 are compatible one if my server supports 1.3 it also supports 1.2 but if my server supports only 1.2 it is only backward compatible tls 1.2 and 1.1 but 1.1 is already <clears throat> deprecated certifying authority plays very important role in establishing the trust relationship between two parties over the internet so thank you thank you sir participants please note the link to submit the feedback form of the session is shared in this meet chat kindly submit it without fail thank you the session is now open for any questions or discussion You can also uh, reach out to me over the email. I will uh, drop my email information. If you have any queries related to this TLS security, digital signature, and anything. Um, I'm not sure whether this uh, session reach the target audience or not because it is more of application side oriented and i believe most of us are aware about this uh, digital signature digital uh, certificates and all tls security and all so i am coming from more of networking and security background hence uh, i i would like to give more hands on kind of thing It seems like there are no questions from the audience. Moving on, I now request Mr. Ranjit Vergis to convey the concluding remark. Good evening, all. It has been such an honor to be a part of this wonderful event. On behalf of this organization,
my hyperplastic due to our system sites and and we were all thoroughly and catched by your presentation it was a pleasure to have you with us and we hope you enjoyed the experience as much as we did thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir let us take a break and assemble back at 7:30 pm for the next section thank you